Hello everyone. Remember me? Um, I, you might know me from youtube.com. It's this great website. They have all sorts of stuff on there. Um, I am kind of back. I'll be back for real soon. Um, but I'm finally going to get to this rapid fire riffs video that I originally asked for the riffs for like five months ago, six months ago. Um, so right on schedule. Yeah. yeah, I've been super busy. I kind of have been like dripping videos out over the last eight months or so um, as I've been finishing up my dissertation. The dissertation has been distributed, so that means that I have sent it out to the committee of five people who will read it. And next week I will be defending it, which is not really sure what that is. We'll find out, but I'm going to bring my sword and my shield and after that i will do whatever edits they ask for and deposit it and once it is accepted for deposit you can finally read it everyone always says let me know when i can read your dissertation a couple weeks and i'll make a little video about it once i have it available but i am pretty psyched with how it turned out actually i'm sick of it it's stupid i don't know what to even feel about it anymore but um you know, here is a little 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 preview, a little proof of uh, this this work I've been going doing. Um, it's uh, you know, lots of lots of stuff. Um, here's here's a little little teaser of the, the outline. Um, and a little teaser of all the examples I have. This is going to be so fun to put page numbers in for all of these once I get the final, final thing. Uh, and then you know, I'll do all that in a sec. Uh, and, you know, here here's the whole thing. People are always like, how many pages is your dissertation? Um, you know, I think it's going to be pretty close to 300 when all is said and done. Um, you know, here, there's all, all sorts of stuff in here. Got some parallax diagrams, you remember those. Um, I need to reread this thoroughly before I defend it. Got some, uh, some head-banging analysis. Um, some data. It's, uh, it's, this has got, it's got everything. Um, and, yeah. Whole, whole bunch of stuff from interviews but yeah I'll do a full video about this once you can actually read it once I've weeded out more of the typos and whatever else um, yeah so 278 right now um, and well that, yeah that doesn't include all the like front matter um, but yeah, that is what I've been doing for the last, well, pretty intensely for the last like three months. Um, and yeah, no, no YouTube, but I've been very excited to get back to the YouTube stuff. I have a lot of fun stuff planned. I have, uh, I'm finally going to return to the Catch 33 series. That's going to be, that's one of the first things up. Um, I have a video about this little track. I'll give you a little snippet. Okay. So I transcribed that. Um, I've got stuff about, more stuff about a band that I've written about before. Um, got some new bands. Not going to give too much away and also not going to promise anything because if I've learned anything, it's that sometimes I spend uh like i i promise something and then it takes me two years to actually do the video so um but there will be there will be more videos and right now is the first one of these i'm gonna look at five riffs good number for rapid fire riffs um and yeah as always thank you to Patreon people for sending me money every month. Uh, 
I appreciate it. And I, I've put that money to good use, as you will see in one of my upcoming videos um, with some collaboration so I can pay the people who I collaborate with. Um, and I, uh, yeah, thank you also to them for being the ones who suggest these riffs. Okay. Oh yeah, no, and then the other thing, one more thing. Um, I was gonna say, uh, stuff that I've been listening to recently, I wanted to shout out. Um, there is this album, uh, one of the people that I interviewed for my um, dissertation. Uh, well, you should definitely check out the Scarcity album. That is going to be very exciting. Um, but uh, this album, Fire at the Plantation, House, um, new album coming out soon. Uh, very cool, like, Between the Barry to Me is probably the closest comparison, but um, <clears throat> a lot of very different, very inventive things going into it. Um, kind of that same, like, grand scale. Um, and then also this band, Annex Void, um, will have their first EP uh, releasing, ooh, releasing this week. That's exciting, I didn't realize it was so soon. Um, but I talked to Stu from this band, um, and this is like really exciting kind of mix of influences from Mashuga, Tesseract, Contortionist, loathe but also all with like kind of a, a, a different spin on it um so i'm very excited to hear the rest of this the singles have been a lot of fun so i think that is it for prologue there, there's been a lot of cool new music there's new inter arma on the way um there is new stuff from dan weiss the jazz drummer that i've been listening to his um even odds record uh, is really good. Um, yeah, let me know. As always, let me know what new stuff y'all have been listening to as well. I feel kind of rusty. I haven't done I haven't done a rapid fire riffs video in like nine months. I don't know. First request for this is uh, for this Ion Dissonance song. I've talked about Ion Dissonance in rapid fire riffs before. I forget which one. Um, but this is from Play Dead, and I'll play along, and there's kind of this series of riffs at the beginning. So going into this, like Ion Dissonance is one of these bands that is doing this kind of off the grid, really tight, really fast, really like dense stuff where they're synced to each other, but they're, they're either playing to a grid that's so fast that you can't hear it, or they are not playing to a grid at all. And I actually talk about this sort of thing a lot with the Dillinger Escape Plan in my dissertation. I wanted to get more into Ion Dissonance in the dissertation too, but I did not. But let's see what this, this riff is doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I didn't listen to this album in a, a while. Uh, yeah, the thing I'm like my shooting from the hip, my interpretation of this is that it is not necessarily off the grid, but it's actually changing tempos pretty quickly, or maybe they're doing some sort of cool subdivision thing, but it's like, you know, in order for things to sound like 
subdivisions or or I, I mean like tuplets, dotted values, whatever. You like it, in order to hear it like that, you kind of need like a steady thing to hear it against, and you don't have that here. Like everybody is kind of like you know whiplash one one thing onto the next uh, together. Um, I'm gonna throw this into transcribe and listen to stuff a little more slowly. All right, let's listen again. So up until there, I think it's pretty, you know, it's, it's like classic math core, but it's on the grid. So bum 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 whatever. So that's like until like the 22nd mark. And then it's like here um, <clears throat> that it starts different. They're, they're going to different tempos with each little section. Um, let me listen to it a little slow, see how it sounds. Actually, maybe I changed my mind listening to it slow. Um, let's listen even slower, see if it gels a little more. So I, what I'm hearing slower is that there actually might be a, a steady beat, but then when it gets really fast, it's uh, really hard to latch onto that, that steady thing. Yeah, I think maybe it's actually just a, there's like some tempo modulation coming out of the, that first chunk, the first 20 seconds, and then the, you know, 20 to 40 seconds ish is at this new really fast tempo with like the kind of metric play stuff, crossing the bar line stuff, uh, these tactus interruptions as they, I call them in my dissertation, um, where, and this also relates to um, this other project, a big project I'm working on, the, the like temporal parallax idea, which I've kind of teased on here for years as I've been working on it. Um, but this idea that a fast pulse parallax, where there's something that for the band just sounds like a really fast pulse, but if you're not like tuned into that and you haven't practiced it, you're not gonna be able to hear that pulse at all or unless without slowing it down. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to like mark the beat a little more uh, precisely. You know, I was head banging, which is analysis. Um, but uh, yeah, let me see if I can figure out what this transition is. So 
So going into that, it's ba da do da do do dong dong ga do do da do do. So it's it's the those little like dissonant runs or, or triplets, um, and the you know the chugs are eighth notes or whatever you want to call them. Um, so going into this transition, it is like this. Maybe it doesn't even change. That would be the craziest thing, right? Um, so that that little fast blast, that ba do da do do do, ba da 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 ba. Um, I think that's actually just like a subdivision of it. Ba da do da do do, ba da 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 da. It's just the switching to sixteenth notes, I guess. Um, ba da da ba da da ba. Or ba da da da. Yeah, so I got a little turned around in there. I think I have the, the tempo right, but I, it was hard to find where the downbeat was, and I think it it changes phase. So I think it's like, you know, ba, 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 ba. There's these little interruptions um, where you have to kind of reset, tactus resets, um, where, where you have to kind of switch where you're feeling the downbeat, but the tempo doesn't actually change. Um, let me see. A little more. So like right around there is where the symbol comes in and I find it a lot easier to, to lock in. And I think through that rest, the rest of that section, it's actually pretty easy to hear at 50% speed. Yeah, and there's this like definitely the uh, triplets. Um, so it's like ba do do da do go do da do do da do go ba do do bo da do boom boom. Um, and it's hard to tell if they're they sound kind of weird and wonky because they're in real life they're playing them so fast and we're speeding them we're we're slowing it down so we're like hearing you know when you play stuff really fast you can get away with it being not like as precise because it's like so fast that you can't you can't even hear the difference um and so i wonder if that's what ha what's happening here and i think it's i think it's triplet like really fast triplets and um these like non-repeating things and these these tactus resets um let me just listen to this again <laughs> Yeah, it feels like there there's like like I thought I like when it when we cross that second transition so at the, around 40 seconds kind of goes to a different subsection and it, I thought that I lost the beat for a sec but I, if I just like kept going it actually lined up again I think um and yeah so there's these little interruptions these little ba da 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 don't do ba do da don't ga do do da do um kind of kind of things um and 
Also some kind of weirder ones, I think. Uh, some like da dum ga ba da dum ba dum ga do do. But then it, it like glues back onto the um onto the riff. So yeah, I think the the ingredients here are you know it's really fast. So when we're listening at this at half speed, uh, it sound it's like it grooves da ba da da ba da da boom. Bow do da do da 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 do do da do. Um, but if we go back to full speed, it's like down do da boom. Bow da ba da da ba da 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 da. So this is that that fast, or that 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 beat that felt slow. You know, da do da do da 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 da. And then all the subdivisions da 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 ba da ba da ba da 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 ba da ba da ba da. Um you know, they become faster than you can really like track with your ear unless you practice, you know, learning it slow um, or listen to it a million times. Uh, yeah, let's just listen to it fast again. Go back a Yeah, you know, roughly. Um, so there's that, and then it's also this is extremely dense in the sense that it's non-repeating. Um, so like very cool example of that thing I call structural density, where you have, uh, yeah, it's like really hard to get a foothold of what's happening. You have to listen really carefully to hear any of these like. Uh, section divisions or you know like there's little motives that repeat but they don't repeat in any sort of like uh uh predictable way so i think that's all i'm gonna do for that i've been saying this forever but i i am gonna do a, a real video about ion dissonance i'm gonna transcribe some of their stuff i'm gonna like really try and get behind the scenes um put it under the microscope so to speak but yeah i'm gonna say that is all the time I have to spend on that. Next one is a request from uh, one of my guitar students. Um, you know, if you live in New York and you want to uh, learn metal guitar or any of this music theory or anything, hit me up. Um, but this is uh, from Obscura, the great progressive metal band from Germany. Uh, I guess that little thing, and if that's John, if that's not the one you were talking about, I apologize. Yeah, so it's this one. Um, so I think there's something weird about the what tuning they have all these guitars in. Oh, get it? Sometimes it's so fascinating getting into these guitar pro ultimate guitar wormholes where people have been arguing about stuff, and um, also shout out everyone who does like these detailed transcriptions or takes stuff from the tab book and puts it on Guitar Pro or into Guitar Pro files. Um, without you, I don't think metal would really be possible, this complicated stuff. Yeah, what I'm hearing kind of leading into this is this like neoclassical kind of thing. <clears throat> so this is a, So one of these is a seven string and the other is a six string. And I think they're in the wrong tuning, but um, I'm just gonna leave them as is. Uh, but yeah, so if, if we're pretending this is standard tuning, this is like a C sharp minor um, shape where, you know, it's like, you know, three, one, three, one, 
two, uh, seven, two, seven. So this kind of very neoclassical tonic dominant thing. And then kind of continuing with the, this harmonic minor dominant thing. Um, and then going up to the six chord ish. I mean, but like none of this is really separate chords. I wouldn't think it's kind of more, uh, like just like passage work. And then this sounds like it's kind of this, this next riff is sitting on the dominant. Um, it's not really, is it? Yeah, so it's not, so it's an, if, if we're pretending this is standard tuning, it's like this E minor chord, uh, you know, it spends a while on C sharp minor with, with all this passage work, all this embellishing stuff and then sits on E minor for a little bit. And then it goes back to, um, to C sharp minor. This is kind of how a lot of this death metal works. Is it like shifts between, um, stuff that's very, like tonal, very neoclassical, um, especially focusing on these like ultra dominant chords to kind of wrap the phrases back around on to the to the start. Um, so a lot of diminished uh, diminished sevenths arpeggios and um, stuff like that. Uh, but then there's also this stuff that's a lot more like modular. No, this is this is very tonal. This is I, I'm messing up what which one is the seventh string. This one is the seventh string. Yeah, so this is, this is actually very tonal because this is just going so three five one three six seven three five and this is the measure that's that goes off the rails harmonically a little bit. So you get like the major third with this this chromatic thing, very half steppy. It's like you know, the, the band switch between the tonal stuff and then the, these like more, I don't even know what to call it because it's not necessarily like the way I think of it. And I like, I actually wrote about this or, or did a, this was like my second video was about this with, with two mold um about how it's more about like the sound of these half steps than it is about like reference to a larger scale or to a tonic. Um, so it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like it goes from being in the key of C sharp minor to being in the key of lots of half steps, um, and just kind of moving those around and trilling them, and they're these these dissonant intervals with each other. E minor chord, so this this minor three sound that like you know if we're strictly in C sharp minor, this should be a major chord. Um, this should be the relative major, but yeah, moving chords around by thirds is like one of those um, kind of romantic harmony, the, the like neo Riemannian types of motion where you're just like, I mean, on the guitar, if you're playing it like this, you're just moving shapes around. But if you are voicing this on the piano and trying to be concise with it, it would be, you know, like, you're just moving like one finger by half step or something. Um, right, so like going from C sharp minor to E minor, you have the, you're gonna move the C sharp uh, up to, or no, you move the C sharp down to a B, so down a whole step, leave the E where it is and move the uh, G sharp down to a G. So you're, you know, you're moving just like these these two voices by step and keeping one the same. Um, so like in a sense, these chords are close to each other. But then the other thing, um, sorry, I didn't finish that sentence. I have such a bad habit of doing that. But the tonally, they're not even in the same key or even in related keys, C sharp minor and E minor. 
Um, the other thing is that you can make any chord sound like a dominant if you treat it like one, if that makes sense. So like rhythmically and where it lands in the phrase structure, it's like, and you know, if it resolves to the tonic, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of functioning as a dominant and you're gonna hear it like that, even if the, the notes don't make like sense in the, the tonal context. So like, when I was listening to this first, it's, you know, it's like very clearly, very neoclassical, very Black Dahlia murder. And then, you know, this part is uh, contrasting. It sounds, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't sound like a dominant, but it, it's like, it's contrasting and you know it's gonna go back to the, the tonic, right? So it's like contrasting thing. And then back to the tonic, half steps, contrasting thing. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, these like, these things, I love these things. The, um, or no, sorry, not that riff, this, this part. Uh, yeah, this. Um, yeah, I'll just do like one more look at like this measure. This is kind of like a, there's a lot of ideas here. I'm, I'm like, and that's always the unsatisfying thing about the rapid fire riffs is normally I like get to the point of being like, okay, I know kind of roughly where I would start for analysis and analysis, but I don't have like two hours to spend on actually doing that analysis. Um, although I miss analyzing music. It's like been a while since I've actually done that. It's been so much just like editing words for a while. Um, yeah, so this like A minor, uh, A minor nine, um, I don't know, B, what is that? It's a G and a E flat. Um, so these like, yeah, like that doesn't fit into any one particular chord. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I think of these as just like being, there's like the, these like guitarists like this, they know how to write tonal stuff and they do that but then as a different kind of color they also use this more like this very out there stuff that's not even in like i don't know like like this is moving from like these these triads like this is b flat minor which doesn't also doesn't make sense in that like constellation of, of things we had before. Um, and this is F minor, uh, and this is, uh, um, seven, seven string, seven string. This is, uh, E flat minor. Um, so there's kind of like freely moving between different minor triads. Um, yeah, so E minor, A flat minor, or G sharp minor, uh, A minor. Yeah, like I think this is kind of A minor. Is it actually doing that same? No, not the same. That would be C to A. Um, but also another like thirds related uh triad motion from um from f minor ish f half diminish uh or f fully diminished i guess to uh a minor um yeah and what i'm doing like when i'm i know i'm doing this kind of like weird just like chord uh identification thing but i'm looking at these patterns it's like you know this is a c e it's like okay that's a and then you know we have another c e and then the a b so that's you know the the scale degree two that's often part of these 
um, when you're just like fleshing out a chord. And up here, it's the same thing, right? So you have um, all of these are, you know, A, C, E, and B. Um, and then that goes to uh, this diminished shape, um, which is, yeah, that F diminished shape. Yeah, because D, um, A flat, F fully diminished, um, and then second time, this is F sharp minor. Yeah. So it's, it's like, yeah, final answer. Go from very tonal to this, this harmonic language that is based on specific intervals so like that half step stuff where you're just like moving half steps around and trilling and doing all these these like uh you know better better da, 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 kind of things um and also planing these minor chords planing is this the this word for um where you just like take a chord uh, like a triad shape and move it around and that's kind of what's happening physically on the guitar but they're also a lot more like nuanced and clever about it than I think of like bands like Origin and um, like Santa Faxis. There, there's that that one video I did about them where it's like literally the same shape, just like moving around the fretboard. Or like Origin, the sweeps, the um, and they're just moving that around um, parallel minor chords. Here, it's you know they're they're fleshing out these chords in in a lot of different really you know, rhythmically interesting and like physically interesting ways on the guitar. Um, but I think, yeah, that's that's the kind of contrast is like slipping between these two things. But I wonder if that contrast is super salient to people who are not like as invested in tonal harmony. Like I feel like for me, tonal harmony is like, yeah, I've spent so much time studying it that it's like, oh, if I hear it, it's like there. It's kind of the equivalent of like hearing if something's in four four, um, it's like oh yeah I know that taps into this whole other set of expectations I have for it, um, and then there's stuff that's not in four four, and here it's kind of similar. It's like it's like okay there's stuff that's tonal, and then there's the whole world of stuff that's not tonal that's like a completely different beast, um, and you can kind of blur between the two, but it's um, I'm always gonna like pick up specifically on the tonal stuff, and I wonder if other people do that too yeah also this pattern of moving from like beat one being unstable uh harmonically to beat two being the resolution of that or, or sorry measure one to measure two measure one measure two is like uh off you know we, we've seen that in like all three of these riffs right like this one is um I, i'm not i don't even know what key we're in anymore like this is i guess uh or e flat diminished thing going to e c minor going to e maybe c minor makes more sense um in the context of these things another pair of, of minor triads yeah so maybe we're maybe i'm getting to a pattern after all you know this is kind of like c minor to e so this third motion the riff before we had this like f diminished ish thing going to A, so another pair of third, pair of chords, minor chords, or minor and diminished chords a third apart. Uh, the one before that we had, um, this one goes through a bunch of different chords, but the one before that was, or like the simpler version of this, was this E minor to C sharp minor, so another third related chord, pair of chords. Um, yeah, so I think if I spent more time on this, there, there probably might be some cool, pretty harmonic thing to, to draw from it. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers that in a little more detail. Um, I'm because rhythmically and and like phrase structure wise, this is pretty straightforward, right? It's like kind of antecedent consequent, you know, and you know they'll they'll you know it's mostly in four, and then sometimes the last like time through or whatever the, the thing is longer at the end these 
additive metric process, or not even metric, but additive like structural process processes. Um, also very Mozartian kind of thing to do. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's what I want to say about this one. Got three more. Next, we have a request about uh, Don Caballero delivering the groceries at 138 beats per minute. And there is a burst section in here uh, at three minutes. And the question is whether there is a rhythmic pattern behind it. So let's see. Okay, so it's it's short. It's just this little bit. Um, is there a rhythmic a rhythm pattern? Is there an underlying pulse? That's always the question with these things. Um, gonna have to listen a couple more times. First thing I'm hearing is this harmonic pattern that's going to just help me get keep track of which of these, like how many hits there are and what um, the what the deal is with each. So I'm going to switch to this. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to listen again. So it's definitely high, low, high, medium, low. I think it's like three, one, three, two, one. I just like listen to that highest voice in this. Next thing to do is to figure out like shorts and longs with all of these. I think I'm going to do that with colors. So blue is going to be long. I'll try and get the long ones first. All right, and then now I'm going to use red for the ones that are really short. So I think that's probably good. And then the ones that are left are these like medium durations. Um, I, I don't know if it's been clear, but I'm reading from, you know, from left to right. And then there's two, two lines. Um, so it's like, uh, 
Yeah, I, let's let me see if I can use this to. My my instinct right now is that it's not on a grid because I don't think there's like, I don't think these different durations are well behaved. I don't think they're like two. They're definitely not like twos and threes or anything like that, um, which you probably were aware of. Um, and it, I don't see, I don't see a repeating pitch pattern or a repeating duration pattern in this. Yeah, and this just helps you kind of see things that would be harder to hear, but I, I don't think there's any sort of repeating pattern in this. Um, and I don't think it is on a grid. But let me see if I can use this to kind of perform this with any sort of accuracy. So, so again, the high, low refers to how high the pitch is, so ba 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 ba, and then the blue is the longest, red is the shortest, and green is this kind of like in between. Yeah, I think that kind of works. And maybe this is the sort of thing that they're using. Um, so they are uh, they are tight with each other. I think they the, the request so that they do this really tight live too. And it's very, it's like the same every time. Um, but I think that it's possible to get tight with just this sort of thing. So like my kind of impression is like, bum, 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 bum. I mess up. Um, and that is, I think, like if I was practicing with the recording for a little bit, I could get pretty synced up with that too. Um, so yeah, that's my guess. A little bit of a misnomer in the title. I don't think this is at 138 beats per minute, but I, yeah, I think, and like one of the things, not to keep bringing up my dissertation, but um, one of the things I talk about is how bands use visuals like this and use, you know, just like being in the same room, practicing a lot uh, in order to play these sorts of things off the grid uh, with each other and get really, really tight like that. So, yeah, I think that's where I where I'm landing on on this. No grid, no pattern, but that doesn't mean it's not uh, playable because it's also not that long of a section. It's like twenty seconds or so, um, and I think if you have something like this to latch onto, um, and like maybe some of these blues and greens might be mixed up, um, but I think this is how I would try to make sense of this. All right, and then last two things. Uh, I'm going to do two Between the Veritimi songs real quick to finish it up. Um, first request is from Obfuscation, uh, from The Great Misdirect, one of, I think, probably the most underrated Between the Veritimi album. I love that album so much. Um, I'm going to grab my guitar, open the tab, see what's popping. Hands. But yeah, so this the question's about the harmony in this first part, which is... Really cool. So this is the riff. Of Roughly. Um, so this is just a classic example of this thing that I call like, uh, like a long time ago, I was writing something about that. I call it like they're between the bear to me escape dissonance. 
escape distance has some technical meaning in, in like classical music and voice leading, but um, I use it here. Maybe it's not distant necessarily, but it's like starting pretty in the pocket. Um, so starting with this minor arpeggio. <laughs> Kind of like a minor, uh, minor seven arpeggio, e, e minor if we were in standard tuning. And that's still in the E minor world, with, you know, maybe kind of shifting to this C major chord ish. And we do that again. So twice through that thing, and then it kind of like jumps away out of that. So then we have this uh, E flat major chord, which is like not, you know, even remotely in the same orbit. Uh, and this is kind of in that same. maybe shifting chromatically down to D. Yeah, I would call that D, so it's kind of like one, five, three, four, or maybe say this is like a G major chord. Either way, it's like another kind of harmonic world away from E flat major. So we're kind of, you know, we're going from uh, and then we kind of find our way back to E minor for um, by way of the, these diminished seventh chords. So we're I would say it kind of lands more D minor, D major. -y. And, uh, and then kind of A minor. We're kind of back in this, and then the real giveaway is when we go to this diminished chord. Which is, you know, pulling back to E minor. So to recap, we have E minor. Again. And then the, this kind of escaping run, and then we're in E flat major. Uh, right. And then D major. And A minor. sharp diminish leading back to the start um yeah and it's i think it's like it goes really nicely with this like kind of alien abduction thing that's going on with the whole album where you're like you know starting in uh, or like solid, tip, solid ground and then we go So like that's kind of the the like reduction of this thing. E minor, E flat major, D major, A minor, D sharp diminished seven. Um, 
Yeah, and this is another thing that I think um, Between the Barrier and Me does, and one of the cool things about their music is that they will often, like, there's, like, you know, things that are kind of inside and things that are outside, and they'll often compound both of them. So it's, like, if it's inside, you know, if it's in clearly in E minor, it's also going to be repetitive. Like, in this case, it's not rhythmically it's in 11A, so it's this. Um, so it's, uh, you know, not, it's not like it's just in 4 4, but it's still, you know, it's that little pattern is repeated. It's all eighth notes or all 16th notes, um, and it's like kind of straightforward. And then when things go off the rails harmonically, it's also rhythmically, it gets kind of weird. We get the new note values. And then as it's kind of heading back, it gets more repetitive again. We get this familiar tricio pattern, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, and then so yeah i think they and they do that on the like grand scale too right they have the like the like verse e sections uh, all the riffs with the heavy vocals and the you know crazy time singers and everything and then they kind of let it all straighten out in the the like chorus like sections where you know it's more harmonically stable it's often clean vocals some sort of singable melody um all that stuff happens kind of at the same time. I think we're seeing that in a microcosm here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do with this or mention with this is that I did a, in high school, I had to do a like um, audition jury kind of piece. And one of the pieces, or a few pieces, and I had to record it. And one of them I did was um, obfuscation. Let me see if I can find that. <laughs> better at guitar thankfully um and also that tone is garbage that i use i don't know why i remember that even at the time i was like why does it sound like that um but yeah that is what i'm going to say about this um that that second like contrasting section is more of the same stuff where it's just like jumping suddenly to these different triads um and also the rhythm train changes the phrase structure changes uh cool all right and then the last one I want to do also between the barrier to me. I saw, um, I was lucky enough to see them on their colors double feature, the colors experience. Uh, got another, I got my like 20th BT BAM shirt. Um, and I had a question from someone who went to the concert with me about uh, this one riff in White Walls, which is um, just like a quick harmonic analysis, was the the request um but the one you know you know the one uh, and it repeats that um so this one also pretty straightforward like very cool um even if it is pretty straightforward but also an E, well, transposing an E minor. All chord tones. And then, like, the question of whether to think of this as a change to a C chord. I don't know, like... I don't think so. I think it's, I think of this more as, like, a... I don't know if I think of this as a separate chord. 
um i feel like so much of music theory is like like when you get past the the basics it's like is this thing that doesn't seem like a chord actually a chord or is this thing that seems like a chord not actually a chord um so like you can have a bunch of different notes and like a melodic line and it's like yeah that's actually hinting at a chord or you can have these things where it's like where you know maybe it seems like I don't know, but there's only really the C. If the, like, if the bass note changed, if it was like... Like that. That might feel a little different. I think, kind of think it's like all E minor-ish. Um, until we get to this, uh, you know, diminished roll. Very textbook for them, um, these diminished runs to bring us back to the, the start of the phrase. So again, it's this E or D sharp, diminished seventh arpeggio. Um, you ever start something and realize I started too fast? Um, I haven't played this. I, like I, I learned most of White Walls like also when I was in high school. Um, I haven't really touched it since then. I spent a while like right after I finished college, I made a resolution to play all the way through Colors, and I got. I think I got like halfway through Ants of the Sky, uh, at the end of that year, and I, um, then I dropped it because I went to grad school, um, but. That'd be fun. Maybe that's that's a good post dissertation project. Get my get some chops back. Um, remember what it's like to enjoy music. Um, and yeah, so there's that section that that thing happens twice. That whole sequence. That... Contrasting thing. Pull out the tab book so I can remember. Uh, yeah, so then there's the contrasting section that's like. Uh, which is. kind of sets up on. You know, I would say this is G, it goes to the, switches to the relative major. Those are almost all chord tones. And then, yeah, so it's the this crunching part is kind of like going from G with a little, you know, three, four, three neighbor to D. Uh, so this this motion by fifth, um, and then we get this outside chord, which is F major, and kind of landing back on G. So it's just this quick uh, flat seven chord. back on on G and then we get uh, this um, D chord so a, a five chord in, in the key of G and also this cool rhythmic thing where we've been in this six eight and then now these are all these are eight notes in the space of six so, and then finishing with again what else but a diminished chord? Um, that same D sharp diminished chord, which uh, can actually go either to G or E minor, but in this case it goes back to yeah. So to to recap, you know, E minor thing, maybe going to C. Uh, 
that and then kind of continuing that run. <laughs> A minor thing, predominant, and then diminished chord, dominant chord, going back to the same start, and do it again. And then we get this relative major thing, G major. D major, and this quick F major, uh, out of borrowing from the relative ma uh, parallel minor, uh, back to G, uh, D major, But yeah, I think that's uh, that kind of answers this question for this. They're you know listening to colors one and colors two back to back. It's like it was really cool hearing the kind of difference in harmonic language between the two. Colors is very like it's more a lot more tonal, and colors two is has a lot more kind of like weird shadings of, of stuff, even in the like tonal sounding parts. Um, but both nights were so good. You if you still haven't. If the tour hasn't come through yet, get get tickets to both nights. Um, it's just like un unbelievable. Um, blown away every time I see them. Ton of fun. All right, I will. I won't see you soon. You'll see me again soon. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks to the Patreons. Thanks to the everyone commenting and stuff, believing in me even while I've ghosted you. But peace out. See ya.